Swing and Andex and in honor of the 10 years since having painted the Soldaderas mural in El Barrio East Harlem, mural of Frida Kahlo and Julia de Burgos honoring Mexican and Puerto Rican solidarity. I responding to some questions I got from Kim Ocion regarding uh, the mural. The Soldaderas mural was inspired by Las Dos Fridas, which is a painting by Frida Kahlo. It's actually a self-portrait where she paints herself double, right? It's Frida Kahlo as two women. But seeing that, I understood. I could see that duality and immediately it reminded me of my experience working in El Barrio, and specifically at the time I was working with El Mosel del Barrio as an artist educator and wanting to represent the two communities that I saw most prevalent in El Barrio, which were the Puerto Rican community and the Mexican community. To me, Frida y Julia most convey that idea of being a soldadera, being a woman who understands what revolution and liberation mean and how to claim it and how not to conform to, to participate in our own perpetual colonization. It speaks to this double version that we have of ourselves, where we have our own authentic self, and then the version that uh, society or our oppressors and colonizers would expect us to be. That idea of wanting to express their authenticity, their highest authenticity, their unapologetic authenticity, and not caring what the norm was in terms of art and what other people were producing, but wanting to just be that their own selves and wanting to bear their intimate struggle as a mirror of what the greater struggle, political, socio socio-political struggle was, that they weren't afraid to, to bear how those issues um, trickle down into their very intimate selves and lives. Como decimos a veces que no tenemos pelo en la lengua, like this ability to just boldly express everything that needs to be expressed and what other people would be encouraged to suppress, being okay with letting that go. And that is also what Julia de Burgos communicates in her poem, A Julia de Burgos, where this essence, this sort of pure, authentic Julia de Burgos is writing a poem, like calling out La Julia Postiza, you know, the fake Julia de Burgos. Soledaderas was very much created in a period of grief in my life, a year after losing my brother to cancer, two months before I had suffered, um, I had suffered a miscarriage of my second pregnancy. So painting um, Soledaderas became this sort of bonding experience with both the, the spirits of Julia y Frida in them expressing, you know, in the case of Frida, her very uh, graphic, you know, Ford Clinic painting about her miscarriage, and, and then Julia de Burgos with her two poems, Suame para el hijo no nacido, and um, creo que latigazos for me also kind of represents that. It was it was a theme in her work to speak to womb loss and, and just the, the wishing that she could have children. There was a solace, there was a connection, there was a solidarity in that grief, and there also was a sense that grief is not a place for us to just lose ourselves completely, if not to delve into and connect with the rawest essence of our power and just kind of skyrocket back up from that pain. But also the other element to it was that I didn't realize at the time that that work was me saying goodbye to New York. I was prepping and life was prepping me to leave New York City where I was born and raised to move here to Borikin or uh, known as the main island of what's known by its colonial name, Puerto Rico. This is my ancestral homeland and Julia y Frida always, you know, let it be known that for them, 
their love was their respective homelands, Mexico and Puerto Rico, and not necessarily the big cities of Paris and New York and Detroit y todo eso, que los Estados Unidos and all these big cities of the world no era lo máximo. Lo máximo era la gente, the people of their country. I had to let go of New York and everything that people say, especially being an artist, right? The expectation is, why would you leave New York? New York should be the center, the capital of the art world. And, and to just let all of that go and return to my essence. We unveiled it on July 6, 2011. July 6 is the day that Frida, that Julia de Burgos passes, but July 6 is also Frida Kahlo's birthday. In 2014, I moved to Puerto Rico at the age of 39. And the reason why I say that is because what I contemplated that first year is that 39 is the age that Julia was when she passed. So, I had to think about my life and what I wanted to do with my life and the impact I wanted to make with my life, con contemplating all that Julia has represented for us in these very brief 39 years that she was with us on this earth. My consciousness has expanded because in both Mujeres' work, they talk so much about the land and the environment and Frida always paint the flowers y la naturaleza and her body melding with or merging with the earth and roots sprouting from her, through her, with the earth. And Julia de Burgos spoke so much about the sea and the cosmos y el rio. And in my case, I learned from this land. This land is what cracked me open, first of all, because it wasn't all romantic and dreamy. It was brutal, um, but literally expanded me and expanded my consciousness to understand that my role in wanting liberation for Puerto Rico and all people on this planet, for Palestinian people, for indigenous people everywhere, for trans people, for everybody on this planet, is not something, it's not about having a relationship with the oppressor and the colonizer where they strike and we strike back. It's actually liberation takes hold from your heart space and that is the place in which it develops from. And all of our strategy has to be informed by our spirit and heart and not by the tactics of the colonizer. A lot of us fall into this process of taking on the colonizer's strategies and tactics that are not born from our essence, right? It's born from their own um, fascination with control and, and conquer, conquering. But some of the most significant and memorable responses that I've gotten to the mural are after Hurricane Maria, my family and I were without power, without light, mejor dicho, we're never without power, without light for four months, but without internet and TV for six months, and it took a whole month before our cell phones started to work again, so we didn't really know what was going on in the world outside of our immediate surroundings. One month after Hurricane Maria, I open my Instagram and find dozens upon dozens of tags. Maybe it went over a hundred or more. Um, to the Soladeras mural, right? And these, these are the ones that actually tagged me, but I found so many more where I hadn't been tagged. And it was people sharing Soladeras as um, different relief initiatives for not just the hurricane here in Puerto Rico, sino también the earthquake in Mexico, which I didn't even know about because I didn't have access to the news. So to consider that the mural not only represented um, solidarity between these two cultures or with mujeres, but also just like this human solidarity in the face of climate change and all that was affecting us and was beyond our control. So that was really beautiful. But what are the things that Mexican, the Mexican, Chicano, and Puerto Rican communities share today? And I think it's that continued relationship, that continued conflicted relationship with the United States. And though Mexico is its own independent country, the fact that the border dynamics uh, still perpetuate this idea of conquest, this idea of invasion, this idea of white supremacy over Mexico as if to suggest that the United States is superior to Mexico and its policies and economy and its people, you know, as recently as uh, Kamala Harris telling people not to come, not to cross the borders when 
the United States invaded Mexico, right? And the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo of 1848 seizes half of Mexico, Mexico's lands. And so um, Puerto Rico is still occupied completely by the United States. So these are the things that historically inform the mural, but are still prevalent today. I always appreciate the fact that I can talk about the things that need to be talked about and reveal the injustices that are faced here in Puerto Rico and elsewhere through something that I love, which is my art. There are so many people that have engaged in this sort of political journey of speaking about the things that need to be spoken out against, like Malcolm X and End of Dead, right? So the fact that I can do this work a través de algo as enjoyable as painting, as writing, um, like Julia y Frida and still be here. The other thing is that there are many people that don't want to engage in certain, certain political conversations. So it's easier to lure people with the arts and engage them then in these topics than it is to actually speak or give a lecture or invite people to a mobilization or to a protest. And so there is a strategy um, to, to using the art to, to speak out against this. The art is a way to go inward and to enter that heart space that we need to be reaching to really understand what liberation looks like, right? Because a lot of people think it's something we vote for or ask from our oppressor, but how could we allow the person who has colonized us to grant liberation and to shape or frame what that looks like. Like, I wouldn't trust that process. So I appreciate art and how it gives me the ability to connect with my own spirit and heart and, and make that determination for myself and claim it for myself in that way. Time of the Mexican Revolution, I should say, the importance with muralism in Mexico in particular was combating the, the sort of privilege that was seen with the way education worked at the time, which is that education was only available to the privileged. Literacy was only available to the privileged. So by painting these um, colossal images that would depict indigenous culture, right, indigenous history for this country and for people to see that on the walls of public buildings and not need to read it or not need to be in a school to understand it. They were getting it off of these walls. And by creating these on such large scales, it gave people a sense of their own majesty, a sense of their own um, brilliant, beautiful history. And so that was the power of art during the Mexican Revolution, which in turn influenced um, Puerto Rican art, graphic art in particular, in the 1950s here with the whole Diveco system. What I love about murals is their accessibility, right? You don't have to pay admission to get into a museum to see this art. It's in the street and it's accessible to all, mostly. One of the biggest heartbreaks for me with Soldaderas is that I wanted it to be on the street and with a whole twist of events, it was painted, it was installed at a, at a community garden, which unfortunately is behind rejas, right? Like iron bars and kept locked. And so it's something that's actually very infuriating to me because the mural hasn't been as accessible to the community as we had hoped. It felt like the right place to put it because when I went to see the Modesto thing community garden, it was beautiful. There was trees, there was a, a stream of water that was carved through it with fish and turtles. Um, I knew that Frida Kahlo would want, that Frida Kahlo and Julia de Burgos would want it there. And Lina Puerta, who's a Colombian artist, created this fountain of a woman's womb. I knew it was important to have the mural there. But at the same time, the mural became inaccessible to the community. Right? So even, even me recording this with the motoras and the cars and the dogs and all the cookies and the crickets and all the stuff that we hear, this is really art of the people and being interactive with our environment, right? That art cannot be sterile. <laughs> um, but in the case of the mural, what I have said is the fact that they continue to be behind bars is it speaks to the state of our people. The fact that our people politically continue to live this subjugation, this political subjugation. So for how infuriating it is to view these mujeres behind bars, um, 
it serves as a necessary reminder that that's the state of our people every day because a lot of us like to think that it's not. We like to see ourselves in the movies and in music videos and think that everything is beautiful when that's actually not the case. That's it. Soldaderas, 10 years.